Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some more geography now and on to Moldova. Super small country that borders Russia and Romania. I'm remembering the right one, right? I hope I am. I think I am. I'm 90 per... 8... 70% certain I'm remembering the right country. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love if you join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Hey everybody, so once again, just like the last episode, I was stupid and I booked the wrong day at the YouTube space, so this episode was filmed in my house. The audio quality is not going to be as good, the black backdrop is totally visible, but hey, we got some good information in this episode. Oh, and uh, you can get one of these shirts, the blood of those who fight for the freedom, jackofnow.com. Anyway, enjoy the episode. Imagine a person who speaks Russian, is orthodox, eats borscht, and lives in a- Okay, yeah, it is the right- yeah. A state that is slowly trying to introduce market enterprise in a partial state-run system. Chances are, you're Russian, right? Nope. Latin. At least in Moldova. It's time, time to, to learn geography, geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. Oh wait, no, 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 they don't border Russia, they border Ukraine. <laughs> I don't know what, what I was thinking. Shit. Right? Yeah, Ukraine holds up the entire border. Russia doesn't have... Russian, Russian land doesn't go there. God damn, that was oof. If you don't include microstates, Moldova is the European country with the least amount of visitors. And even then, Monaco, a microstate gets like three times more visitors. This episode is going to be very fun because if you know me, I love diving into the obscure, underrepresented regions of the planet that need publicity boosts. So be honored because today you're about to enter the Bob Saget of Europe. Huh? <laughs> Most people in the world probably won't be able to tell you where Moldova is on the map. If you can, congratulations, you're probably Moldovan. First of all, the country is landlocked no, located just, in eastern... I just played a lot of map games growing up. Way too many. Europe bordered by Romania to the west and Ukraine to the north, east, and south. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Ukraine does take up that entire border. Okay, I don't know why I was thinking Russia. Honestly, I was probably thinking USSR. I don't know why I've got the Soviet Union on, brain, on my brain right now, but I do. Sorry, Ukraine. Yes, Ukraine we don't even took this one mile wide corridor on the lower Dniester National Park, cutting off the closest access they could have had to the Black Sea. The country is divided into 32 districts, with the capital and largest city, Kishinyau, located in the south center of the country. In addition, they have three municipality cities, Kishinyau itself being one, along with Balti and Bender, as well as two strange autonomous territorial units, Gagauzia and Transnistria. We'll talk more about these later. The country has only one main international airport, Kishinyau International, otherwise, smaller, uncertified or partially certified airports can be found in places like Balti and Markulesht. Now, after Kishinya, if you consider Transnistria part of Moldova, then the city of Tiraspol, their capital, would be the second largest one. Otherwise, Balti would be next. And speaking of which, let's just get it over with. What exactly are those two strange autonomous guys, Transnistria and Gagauzia? Well, in the simplest way Please I can tell put me, it, Bobby. both of these places are a little more Russian influenced from the rest of Moldova, as if Moldova wasn't already Russian influenced enough to begin with, but we'll talk about that later. Gagauzia is kind of of like a more truly autonomous state in the fact that the people are culturally distinct with a Turkic Orthodox Christian background. They speak their own language, Gagauls. It's split into four separate enclaves made up of these localities. I've literally never heard of, like, I've heard of Transnistria before. Of course, I've heard of Moldova before. I've never heard of Gagauz before. ...that have over 50% Gagauz populations, including this small two-mile-wide plot of farmland next to Karbalia. Even though they politically disagree with Moldova, as in they've threatened that if Moldova tries to join the EU, they would opt out for independence and side with Russia. Regardless, they are actually pretty chill. You can visit and easily take pictures, see if you can get to one of those Welcome to Gagauzia signs on the road. Transnistria, on the other hand, is a little more tricky. They actually have declared independence in 1992, which has led to military conflict in the 90s. After a ceasefire fire was established they set up rules but today it lies in a frozen conflict zone status today they have their own what? government military police postal system currency vehicle registration you even have to show your passport before crossing the border and with about a third of the population being russian it's no surprise that they side with russia and have russian peacekeepers to maintain uh. the border security yeah i know insert your opinion in the comments below you can find lots of soviet style symbols in their streets in fact they're the only state in the world that still uses the former ussr hammer and sickle in their flag Cringe. oh we started that 
that, and even we don't have that anymore. Yeah, I'm just such a fan of your early work, you know? Some notable spots of interest might include places like the Stephen the Great statue, he's like the hero of the nation, the sites of Old Orge, mm. the fortress of Soroka, Manuk Beli's castle, the Ark of Triumph and Cathedral of Moldova, so many monasteries like these, the National Museum of History of Moldova, the National Museum of Ethnography, the State Circus in Kishinyal, the Little Prince statue, the Jewish Cemetery, Gypsy, Wait, like Little Prince has in... the State Circus in Kishinyal, the Little Prince. Oh my god, yeah, that that's the little prince from the French story, right? Because he's standing on a little planet. Um, that story was so sad, dude. Statue, the Jewish cemetery, Gypsy Hill, and probably the most iconic landmark, the underground wine city of Malesti Michi, the Guinness World Record largest wine collection in the world with over 100... What the fuck, you can drive in it? 120 kilometers of tunnels and corners. 120? What? Dude, that's a lot of fucking wine. Corridors, yeah, they love wine. Let's talk more about resources and such in... Like, can you just drive through, have your passenger open the window and just like... Ah, oh, let's see, I'm feeling uh, that one on the 19 kilometer uh, marker right there on the right, left, upper left. Yeah, right there. All right, thank you. Now, if you don't know anything about Moldova's land, one thing you definitely should know is wine. Most houses in the countryside and even some of the cities have wine cellars. It's kind of like what saunas are to Finland. Ah, great analogy. Yeah, I, I get it. First of all, Moldova's <laughs> land is mostly situated between the two longest rivers of the country, the Prut, which makes up the entire western border with Romania, and the Dniester with Ukraine. But then with Transnistria, a series of arbitrary lines through flat farm fields goes past the river, hence where the name Transnistria comes from, across the Dniester. The country is made up of small, short, forested hills cut by numerous creeks and rivers, the tallest point being only 430 meters high, Balinesht Hill, and all of which are part of the Moldovan Plateau, which extends into the larger Carpathian mountain chain. The largest natural lakes would be either the Manta and the Beliu, located right on the border with Romania. And right at the very southernmost tip of Moldova, they have a small 200 meter coast with the Danube and their only shipping port with access at Girjulesht, which is essentially the only indirect point of access they have to the Black Sea, which is kind of important. Whew, all right, animation is done, so you know what that means. This is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Noah takes over as co-host in this segment, so I don't end up losing my voice before this episode is over. Uh, brother man, I think you have a problem. Don't care, take it away. But half of the country is arable and chances are no matter where you travel, you will find a vineyard. As mentioned before, Moldova takes wine very... Does, does Noah have a scar on his neck? Am I seeing that right? Seriously. And for a nation as small as they are on the world stage, it's amazing they've ranked 12th in wine production. They even have a holiday... Only 12th? Their lush landscape is home to various... Moldova. Come Well, they are very small. Guess that makes sense. Animal species like brown bears, European hares, minxes, great egrets, white storks, and the national animal, the oryx. You can even find it on their coat of arms. Just north of the capital, you can find one of the largest gypsum caves in the world, the Emil Racovita, containing over 20 underground lakes. Food-wise, they pretty much follow the same format as Romania. You have things like mamaliga, sarmale, and placinte. You'll notice mm. everything kind of has a Slavic twist to it, lots of sour cream added to soups, Borscht, a sour tasting soup is popular, as well as pickled vegetables. Economy I know I wouldn't be a fan of pickled vegetables. I know that much. I don't like pickle. Um, but never had borscht. I feel like I have to try borscht someday just to say I've had borscht. I'm not Eastern European in like any way. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. I think I am. Well, my German family, I think, moved to the U.S. before they were, you know, before Germany was a thing. They were just Prussian. But I think they were from the part of Prussia that is now part of Poland. I think. I don't know. I remember looking at it once, and that's kind of the vibe that I got. So, there's a chance I'm Polish instead of German. You know, depending on if, like, you know... Yeah. <laughs> wise things really changed up after independence from the so That would be a plot to it, but now based on my physical appearance, I think I'm German. 
Soviet Union. Trade policy changed and for a while they had a huge inflation rate after switching currencies. Today they are classified as a poorest country in Europe in terms of GDP Ooh. per capita and to address this they had to switch up a few things. One thing they did was they greatly loosened the foreign investment barriers to pretty much anything as long as it didn't go against the interests of national security and order. Also purchasing agriculture and forested lands are forbidden. Even so not much changed and it's partially because mm, well, it kind of went like this. All right, independence, ready to take on the world. Sweet, so what are you gonna do now? You're gonna open up a market economy? Yes, technically. I mean, you know, I'm still gonna like kind of heavily re regulate wages and prices and add a few legal restrictions, but yes, privatization and whatnot. Oh, okay, uh, in that case, when are you going to announce this globally? And we'll get to that later. First, I need some wine. Yep, Moldova kind of lacks in the PR department for now. Otherwise, there is a slow but steady overall growth, but it's always kind of hindered by domestic problems. Seems like a great time to discuss more of that in... Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Now, it really does kind of seem like in order to understand Moldova, you kind of have to understand Romania first because it's so important. But alas, these videos are done alphabetically, so sorry. Ugh, I should have named myself Lomania. Someone said Lomi. Getting off topic. Anyway, including the disputed autonomous regions of Gagauzia and Transnistria, Moldova has about 3.3 million people and has seen a decline since the peak at 3.7 in 1992. The country is made good. up of about three quarters that identify as Moldovan and 7% Romanian, but in all honesty, they're pretty much the same people. After that, there is a noticeable Ukrainian minority at about 6.6%. Is Barbie trying to piss off like Moldovans or something? Moldovans and Romanians or something by calling them the same people? Barbie, you've been doing this long enough to know that you don't say things like that. Gagals at about 4.6, and the rest are mostly Russians, Bulgarians, Romani, and other groups. They use the Moldovian Leu as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right. Hear that? Britain and other wrong countries. Though it's not entirely your fault. You were colonized by the British, and they forced their terrible driving habits upon you. For that, I am sorry. But the left side is the wrong side to drive on. Drive on the right. It makes sense side of the road. Now, what exactly is a Moldovian? Well, in the shortest, simplest way I can put it, unless you talk to one of the incredibly nationalistic ones that will start a debate, they're basically Romanians. They speak pretty much the exact same language, except the Moldovan might use a few Russian slang words here and there, but essentially, they're pretty much just speaking the same thing. For those who don't know, the Romanian language is actually a Latin-based Romance language related to French, Italian, and Spanish. It is the easternmost Romance language in Europe. I've heard stories from Latin Americans and Romanians meeting each other, and they're kind of like, hmm, I kind of understand a bit of what you're saying. Where they differ though would be politics and history. This is kind of what separated them. Very similar to what happened to the Koreas. Remember those episodes? My mom was in one of them. Essentially, even though they were part of the Warsaw Pact, Romania never became a Soviet Republic, whereas Moldova did. And then they kind of became somewhat Russified. Eventually, Romania leaned more towards capitalistic interests and eventually joined the EU. Moldova never did. So basically, what you have are two siblings that were brought up in different schools and taught very different lessons from two drastically different faculties. Today, most Moldovans are by Shit, that's a really good fucking analogy. That, Barbie, that might be the best one yet. And I don't know how you're going to top that one, because that one was, uh, that one is a fantastic example. Like. Damn. Like, impressively Russian. good. You can still see hints of the Soviet past and influence, but, like, it's 50 times stronger in Transnistria. They are, like, turbo Russia fans. One way you can see the influence, for example, would be the fact that over 90% of the nation, to varying degrees of devotion, identify as being part of the Orthodox Church. Nonetheless, they've still held on pretty well to their roots. They have a plethora of traditional Moldovan folk arts and music, ancient ballads like these. They have a holiday in July where everyone just kind of puts on a culture show. Moldovan ceramics and weaving culture has always been a trademark of the country's identity. Keep in mind, they also have a noticeable gypsy or Roma community, especially in the town of Soroka. They even have a king of gypsies, this guy. He acts more of like a communal facilitator rather than an actual ruler. It's interesting though, because no matter- I like how his name's Arthur though. Long live the king. No matter how hard the Slavic culture has tried to permeate through their populace, they just could not let go of their passionate Latin roots. Moldovans have always kind of had like a little bit of a humorous side. They don't mope around and let life or struggle get to them. They love it when anybody notices them, and when they do, they don't hesitate to put on a show, especially when it comes to Eurovision. What the fuck? That's where that's from? That was Moldova? Wow. 
They celebrate harvest festivals, huh. a car-free day, a huge music festival in March. Anyway, we could go on and on, but we gotta discuss the history in the quickest way I can put it. The Trapilia culture, the Drakians, the Romans, Bulgars, Hungarians, and other tribes invade. The Mongols came by, Turks come in. Stefan the Great, the hero of the nation, wins 44 battles. They end up becoming an Ottoman vassal state. Russia comes in and annex. I think I watched a video. Did I watch a video series? No, I did not. I think, I think there's a video series by, oh, it's one of those history channels that covers the battles and stuff like that, that I used to watch that I haven't in a long time. Um, oh no, why am I forgetting it? But I think they, one of them did a series on Stephen the Great. I'm fairly certain it was on Stephen the Great. Um, and... It was like a four episode series or something like that. I think I watched it on my own time. I don't think I reacted to it. Um, it was it was a fantastic. It was a well made series. It was really good. I really enjoyed that one. If I did react to it, then good on me. If I didn't, if this was before I started doing YouTube, then go watch it. Find, find what I'm talking about because <laughs> I can't remember which YouTube channel did that. Next, what they called Bessarabia. After World War I, Romania came in. They unified. After World War II, the Soviet Union came back in. They become a Soviet Republic. Moldova becomes very Russianized until 1991 independence. The Nistar War with Transnistria. Scandals, protests. They can't figure out who they want as a president for like three years. And here we are today. Now, uh -huh. I asked some of you guys, the Moldovan geography peeps, to give me a list of some of the most famous Moldovan people in your opinion. And here's some that you mentioned. Oh, Ozone, the guy who made that Numa Numa song, the epic sax guy, Ion and Doina, Maria Bisu, Eugen Doga, Alexandru Plamadayala, Maria Sebotari, Gregor Veru, Nikolai Skislov, <laughs> Alexander Frumkin, Anton Rubinstein, Samuel Zemurai, and Horst Kohler. I, they said he kind of counts. All right, cool people and even cooler ties to the rest of the world, which brings us to... Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, as Europe's most obscure nation, Moldova has always kind of wanted to break out and show the world what they're made of. First of all, they get along with many of the other former Soviet states, especially the Caucasus ones like Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Although business isn't that strong between them, they still love to share stories whenever they visit each other. Ukraine is probably the closest one though, as they are a major trade and import partner. Many Ukrainians live in Moldova, and they've been key players in their history. Now, since independence, Moldova has always kind of been in between a tug of war match between Russia and the EU. Recently, Moldova has expressed a great desire to join the EU and follow the footsteps of their brothers Romania and preference has been waning towards their former empire rulers except in Transnistria and Gagauzia and whenever Moldova becomes a little too I wonder how this has changed in the years since and especially within the last year I wonder if uh, maybe Russia's actions are pushing Transnistria away um it would be because like it, it is different like Russia's forceful occupation of Ukraine right um could change their minds about or well russia's attempt at occupying ukraine uh that is failing miserably could change uh transnistrian uh belief in that state European. Russia talks change. harder at these two areas, which kind of keeps Moldova in a slight limbo state diplomatically. In terms of their best friends, though, almost every single Moldovan I talk to has said the same country, Romania. It's not even a friendship. It's literally a family. These two countries understand each other family. better than anyone else, and despite the small differences, they are one blood. Many people have family in each country. They share the same language, stories, food, and weird Eastern Latino culture. In conclusion, Moldova is like a heavily Slavic influenced Orthodox Latino nation with two strange breakaway children but when it gets a little too much for them to handle they just sit down and sip the wine stay tuned monaco is coming up next and that was geography now moldova got nothing really to add here at the end this was a good episode i thought it was paced pretty well um got no complaints i hope you guys enjoyed it remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more and i'll see you guys in the next video peace <laughs>